Hey guys, welcome back. So today we want to talk about bolt guns versus gas guns and is one superior to the other? Does this old girl suck? Well, when I was a much younger man, rifles like this SSG Steyr were kind of the cream of the crop when it came to precision rifle accuracy. Getting a self-loading rifle to match the accuracy of something like this was pretty much impossible. I had a PSG-1 back in the 90s, believe it or not, foolishly sold it. But uh, the PSG-1 could not come anywhere near this rifle in terms of accuracy. At best, it was a one-inch gun with factory loads, but it didn't even oftentimes pull off that one-inch group. It was usually one-and-a-half-inch groups or so. And so this is a true sub-minute gun. And so the question then becomes, well, have gas guns progressed since then, since the PSG-1, since early precision rifles that were self-loading? And that's a question we're going to talk about and hopefully answer for you guys in this video. But before we get started, guys, if you enjoy our content, please take a moment just to like, share, and subscribe, and also hit that notification bell. It helps us out tremendously here. And also comment down below. We enjoy reading those comments, and it also helps us with the algorithms. With all that being said, let's take a closer look at the bolt gun and how it stacks up to the modern gas gun. I'd like to take a moment to thank our friends over at PrimaryArms.com for helping to make today's video possible. If you've not checked out their store before, please swing by and check out PrimaryArms.com. They sell a lot more than Primary Arms optics. They sell clothing, backpacks, firearms accessories, firearms themselves, and so much more. They generally have a pretty good stock. Their prices are usually really good as well. They ship fast as well. I've been doing business with them for years, so please swing by and check out PrimaryArms.com. This Steyr SSG chambered in 308 Winchester was and still is a very accurate rifle. It has cold hammer forged barrel, a really nice receiver. It's been adopted by several militaries as a precision slash sniper rifle. And on top of it, I have a, a three by nine Savorsky scope, which has a duplex reticle in it. And we started off our testing to compare this bolt action gun to the gas gun of my choice for this video. And it's we wanted to see how well, first of all, they could put down some groups using some Federal 168 green gold metal match ammo, which is supplied to us by our friends over at Federal for free. Want to thank them for doing that. Been using Federal ammo since I was a kid. It's the best stuff out there, especially their gold metal line. It's kind of the gold standard. So we put down some groups this um, at 100 yards doing three shot groups. We're doing three shot groups versus five shot groups right now because of a shortage of ammunition. And then we did some fast fire groups, which would mean I would run the bolt as quickly as I could and then get on back on target and fire. Now this gun has something that's a little different than some rifles that you're probably used to. And it looks like Grogu just threw himself on a grenade for me. Thank you, my little buddy. <laughs> but anyway, this has a set trigger. So what does that mean for those of you that might not know? When you close the action of the gun, you pull this rear trigger, that sets the front trigger to where it's less than a pound. We're talking in ounce, or in, in ounces, this trigger pull. You just touch it and it goes bang. But you can also run the gun without that and it still has a very light, you know, maybe three and a half, four pound trigger on it, very light, crisp trigger on it. So you don't need to use that set trigger. So when I was shooting quickly, I was not using the set trigger. Then I went to slow fire groups. I used that set trigger for the best possible trigger. And we'll show you what some of that looked like in terms of the fast fire and slow fire groups using the SSG. For my gas gun, I chose the SCAR 20S. If you go back and watch our first video on this rifle, I was less than impressed with the accuracy of the gun. Matter of fact, I was kind of disappointed. I thought that FN was capable of doing much better. And then we put an OSS suppressor on it and it went from a one inch gun to a consistent sub minute gun. And so this is one of my more accurate um, gas guns that I have access to right now. Now, I do have the old LRP H&K, which is a sub-minute gun. Uh, I have shot it quite often. I also have an F4 and 6.5 Creedmoor. It's a sub-minute gun. It's based on the AR-15, AR-10. But I've been 
impressed by this rifle, so I've been holding on to it, doing more testing with it, and it seems like the more that I shoot it with the 168 grain Federal gold medal match ammo, the better this gun shoots. So I compared this rifle to the SSG. Now in true Mac fashion, we got through the 100 yard accuracy tests, and then I started doping my rifles for 250, 200, 250 yards. They wanted to work a flapper tree to show you how fast I could do it with a bolt gun versus a gas gun. And I broke my Svorsky scope. It won't take any inputs uh, into elevation. No matter what I do, it's holding low by um, a good mill. And there's nothing I can do to get it to come back up. Don't know what happened to it. Hopefully it's something I can fix because I'd hate to think that that classic scope is broken. So we had to switch midstream and do our 200 yard testing on the flapper using my Bagara uh, B14 Wilderness, which is in 6.5 Creedmoor. So we did some slow fire and fast fire groups with the SCAR 20 at 100 yards with those 168 grainers. And you can see that for whatever reason, when I'm shooting the SCAR or any other gas gun, the, mo the more time I take to aim and take those deliberate shots, it doesn't always necessarily pan out and mean I'm gonna shoot a tighter group. Many times I'll shoot as soon as that crosshair comes back onto the target, I think it's there. I'll start to apply pressure to the trigger, boom, it goes off, this has a Geissele trigger in it. And I can shoot accurate groups fairly quickly with this thing uh, as a gas gun. It settles down, it has that long throw bolt in it, does not have the abrupt recoil impulse of the 308 bolt action rifle, which jumps and takes you completely off target. With this gun, I can make follow-up shots very, very quickly. And that'll transition into how quickly I can shoot a bolt gun at 200 yards versus the SCAR as well, and we'll show you some of that footage. But again, we had to use the Bagara B14 and 6.5 Creedmoor because I screwed up my scope. So that was four headshots with the bolt gun from 1, 150 to 250. All right, all headshots using the uh, SCAR 20. From 1 to 150 to 2 to 250. Bolt guns continue to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, are they obsolete? No. I still have bolt guns I love shooting, and I uh, like bolt guns for things like extended long-range shooting. If you're going to try to shoot out to a mile, 338 Lapua is going to be a good caliber uh, for you to use and try getting a gas gun in 338 Lapua. It can be done. They're rare and expensive, and I don't know how accurate they are, but I know that my 338 bolt action is extremely accurate. So when, you come, when it comes to big, large calibers and shooting distance past 1,000 yards, bolt guns still have an advantage there, at least in my opinion. Now, are they the same in terms of speed? Well, in my experience, the gas gun is faster in every way imaginable. Faster to reload if you use detachable magazines, faster on follow-up shots. And when it comes down to accuracy, this is where things really get interesting. Modern gas guns like the SCAR 20S, and I have others, the F4, the MR762 uh, A1, that's the LRP, all of them are sub-minute guns. And this bolt gun, the SSG with factory ammunition, is a sub-minute gun. Let's take a look at some of those groups. Up top, this was the first group of the day. This is the SCAR 20, 168 grain federal gold medal match, and three shot, 0.35 of an inch. And we're not cherry picking groups, guys. This is every group we shot. And then we come back down over here to the SCAR. And this was fast, okay? So this is me shooting as fast as I could, getting it back on the uh, target, get it settled down, and then touch off that next round. And even shooting quickly with the 168 grain Federals, 0.37 of an inch. Then the SCAR slow fire, I really didn't gain much, 0.6 of an inch. And again, the 168 grain. But what you're gonna see here is the SCAR is consistently sub-minute. So 
Now we move over to the SSG. The SSG, me firing it without the set trigger uh, and just shooting, you know, loading and shooting as, as I quickly could. Um, that produced a group that was 0.67 of an inch. When I stepped it down to slow fire, it looks like I got right at a half an inch, 0.55. So, you know, comparison in terms of accuracy, the SCAR and the SSG are pretty, pretty much running neck and neck. Now this group down here is where we started to notice scope issues. I was trying to dope it for 200 yards and confirm, and that's when things went awry, and I had to pick up the, the backup gun, which is the Bagara and 6.5 Creedmoor to do our 200 yard shooting. So when we take a look at that 200 yard shooting on that flapper tree, it's pretty interesting. You can definitely see the gas gun shines. It shoots faster. So in the end, what do I think? Are bolt guns obsolete? No, no more than revolvers are. If I was looking for a rifle for, you know, hunting, self-defense, if I was in law enforcement, military, I would most definitely be looking at modern gas guns. As a matter of fact, the modern military, U.S. military, is looking at gas guns. The M110, the Mark 20, this is actually an adopted rifle. It's a precision rifle. Um, you know, we have a number of different gas guns, the CSAS and others, which is based on the H&K, much like my LRP. Uh, the gas guns have dominated. And now we're starting to see a shift from 308 to 65 Creedmoor, which will extend those ranges even further. And the gas guns that they're choosing, the military, U.S. military, are every bit as accurate with factory ammunition as any bolt gun I've ever shot. The only area a bolt gun really shines is being able to shoot larger calibers at extended ranges, kind of like with revolvers. Their only real true benefit at this point is just raw horsepower. They're not obsolete, but if you want something more powerful than a 45 ACP 9mm or even a 10mm, you can go buy yourself a 44 Magnum. Is it worth it? In my opinion, no. I'd rather have a 9mm. So when it comes to choosing one rifle over the other for what my needs would be, gas gun all day, every day. I enjoy shooting my bolt guns. I love my bullpup Desert Tex. Uh, I used to enjoy shooting this. Hopefully I can get the, sort, the scope sorted out. But I still love shooting the Bagara B14. That thing's less than a thousand bucks and it's, you know, sub minute consistently with Federal Gold Medal Match. So there's some really, really good rifles out there. Tika makes a great rifle as well. And that's a bolt action. But for me, I'm telling you guys, gas gun, it's the future. And I can only imagine the accuracy potential of these guns is only going to increase. I'm, I'm sure using hand loads, I could get this SCAR 20 to shoot even better than it already does, which I find hard to believe because this thing very rarely goes very much over a half a minute at, uh, at, in terms of accuracy. My buddy was shooting it out here on a perfectly still day and shot the tiniest three shot group at 300 yards I've ever seen. I mean, it was just amazing what this gun's capable of. So yeah, for me, gas guns all the way if I could only choose one, but bolt guns by no means are obsolete. They're just probably not the best choice depending on what you're trying to do. If you're a PRS com competitive shooter, you're gonna choose a bolt gun. If you're military law enforcement or you just wanna protect your property, might want to take a look at the gas gun, but the bolt guns, they're still going to serve you well. Guys, I look forward to the comments down below because I know a lot of you love one or the other more, and I'm sure it's going to cause uh, some, some discussion. I look forward to reading those discussions and taking part in those discussions and answering any questions you may have. Also, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, guys, the best way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. Link in the video description below. Give that link a click. You get direct access to me. I answer all private communications. You get early access to videos like this and private blog posts and videos. So again, Patreon, link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, got a little join button. Mash that little join button and consider supporting us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support. I'll talk to you guys soon.